except my tab, my laptop screen. That's oh. the only thing we actually not to take photos of. Um, not that you can see it from there anyway. Um, <laughs> right. Other than that, we'll uh, we'll talk you through the system as we go. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna oh. really have to actually seat put belts, all your seatbelts yeah. on, I'm afraid. The first part of the journey is uh, manual to get to the start point. Okay. Uh, that's purely because we've mapped one direction of the route, which was for to bring a VIP to the uh, opening ceremony. Yep. Um, so we have to start at the start point or near the start point to give you the best experience. So we should drive manually there first. So we are Jaguar Land Rover, based in the UK. Um, this is the very first time we've created a self-driving uh, I-PACE, so it's an all-electric vehicle. Um, we have worked on other cars in the past and we've done other um, autonomous systems on them. We've been working in the field for the last five or six years. Um, we've been working with this particular car for the last three months, specifically for this demonstration at this show, at this, for this event. Um, Jim briefly touched on the mapping. Um, so in the future we'll be able to go and purchase high definition maps, really detailed maps from companies such as TomTom Tom or HIA, or you know, people like that. Um, that will provide us lots more information. Currently we can't buy them, so we're having to create our own. So we came out here the last couple of weeks um, and we've pre-mapped the route um, and a, a couple of different roads. Um, and from that we've then got information in the map for where traffic lights are, where speed bumps are, the speed limits. Um, which lanes go where, so we know which lanes turn left, turn right, go straight on, for example. Um, so there's lots of information, more than in a standard sat nav, we've mm. had to had to program it. So we've got this high definition map, um, and from that, um, our autonomous system can work out where it's going and what it's got to do. Um, as standard, the iPACE, if I just turn the screen on, um, has the front radar, uh, the front camera, and the two rear radars. Uh, that's completely standard and that gives the customer features, for example, um, ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, um, emergency braking features, um, and also blind spot monitoring, things like that. Um, we've added to those that sensor set um, the traffic light camera, which you can see up behind the rear view mirror, um, and also a, a, a more accurate GPS kit. Um, the traffic light camera, its sole job is to detect traffic lights and tell us whether they're red or green, whether it's safe to travel. Um, we pull in data from all the other sensors um, to build a, a picture of what's going on around the vehicle. Because we know the route we're travelling on um, and the, the types of junctions, the types of situations we're likely to come up to, means we can we've tailored the sensor set of this car for this demonstration. Um, if we're travelling on particularly complex, sorry, excuse me, complex junctions, um, roundabouts, things like that, we would certainly need more sensors, different sensors, probably lidars, things like that. Um, this was for a demonstration for the opening ceremony um, so we're going to travel down to the Zabil Club because we've mapped from there to the DWTC, the World Trade Centre oh. Just stand down a bit waiting for the RTA man to catch us up Ok, there is So this is a manual version? Standard customer car um, and then, and then add working. the autonomy on top of that So it's more um, of a connected car? Sorry? It's a connected car. No, so the information is, it processes its own information, right? Yes, yeah. yes it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so our fallback is always to revert back to a normal car. Um, so this is why Jim's here. So if we ever encounter a situation the vehicle can't deal with, because we're still in development currently, um, Jim can uh, gently press the brake or accelerator to um, like in aid the system. If he presses them hard, he takes full control. The autonomy system shuts down. Okay. Um, if he grabs the steering wheel, the autonomy system stops working, and the um, it becomes a manual car again. Um, he's also got a, got a button on the steering wheel, oh. which he'll point out in a minute once we've pulled out of here. He's not distracted. Yeah, still trying to wait for him to catch up a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, so we use the uh, heated steering wheel button. Oh. You won't use it out here. It's too hot for that. <laughs> um, so I can yeah, switch between. Uh, self-driving and manual mode okay. with these seamlessly goes in between. That's really useful for development purposes. Um, something happens in front which we've not come across before, it means I can just take over control, drive around whatever it is, uh, and then get back on the route and just re-engage autonomy. 
So in case there is there is a barrier on the road that was never earlier, yeah, detected, then you need to take manual control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or so, actually, so, so, say a cyclist fell off his bike in front, we can obviously stop and help them, but it means we can pull over and drive around the incident. And so like how does a car so. react to that situation? So, so that's why we would go manual and drive around it. So certain situations we can sense, and others we cannot, yeah, based okay. on the sensor set we've got. Um, and it's, it, it's it's very different, it depends on. So vehicles in front of us, vehicles in the road, things like that, we will stop for autonomously. Okay. Um, if there was something out of the ordinary, or something we haven't yet dealt with with this car, then there's a chance the vehicle may not um, detect it. Hmm. And if there's a chance of that, then Jim will always take manual control early to ensure that, we, uh, that we're always safe. This is a, as I think Andrew said, this is a prototype car. It's one of one, one of the only ones, well, it's the only one in the world mm -hmm. uh, like this. Just so, go turn the system on now. Yeah, so we're that, just that, and resume. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. Back into Thomas mode. Simple as that. So normally we'd, for this route, we'd be starting as a build club in, at stationary. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a bit of a startup screen which you sort of heard and skipped over. Uh, but for where we are now, we're starting on, on the fly. So Alan can just turn this on the system on from the back. Mm. And if need be, I can hit the manual button, feel the car slowing down, I can accelerate and steer. It's, it's a normal car? And just turn it back onto autonomous. It's just carries on. Okay. Still slowing down, there we go. So, um, yeah, it's. Again, we have to have the high definition map. Mm. Um, we. Alan's already said you get it from a company like here or TomTom, Tom. Mm. Um, you buy it, it's like sat in the car, you know, come standard. It has things like the, where the um, speed bumps are, which you'll see in a minute, it'll come and then the car will slow down, four and then speed back up. Um, traffic lights, travel light, not only just the traffic lights, where the travel lights are, so the camera knows where to start looking for them, but also um, where the stop position for the car needs to be, because obviously different traffic lights have different, they're yeah. in different positions and things. But back in the UK, we have uh, red zones at the start front of the lights for the cyclists. Yeah. So the car needs to know and it can't uh, encroach into that space as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, the high definition map is, is quite a key thing, um, along with the moment currently with, with the GPS as well. Mm. Um, so we've already mapped that ourselves for the time being, but we can't buy them commercially. So yeah, we'll come, you see in a minute on the screen, the screen will change for. Um, Juncture, there we oh. go. So you've got traffic lights showing the colour of the traffic lights existing, and also again from the HD map showing yeah. the lane we're actually going in. So signal lights have changed. Green. So what I'm seeing right now is oh, the nice. HD map, right? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So we won't move until they move, of course, <laughs> even though the lights have changed. Having a nice uh, chat. Or okay. <laughs> yeah. um, next pizza when he stops. So, uh, yeah. So yes, so if the whole of Dubai was mapped, mm. we could put in any destination, the car would be able to drive wherever we wanted to, knowing the, the roads where they are, which lane goes where. Uh, so here, obviously classic, you've got different lanes, you go in different, completely different directions, so the car needs to know how many lanes it needs to move over uh, and where it needs to be. Jim, are you working on the HD maps for the whole of Dubai? Um, I'm not sure if here are or who is, but they will okay. be. Because of the fact they're here at this expo, yeah. I'm expecting them to be providing those sort of detailed okay. maps, yeah, indeed. Okay. Uh, they are, so they are on the stand here, so if you want to ask them about that, that would be interesting. Sure, uh, sure. I know they've done parts of the UK, like London and things like that. Yeah, I imagine in places like San Francisco, yeah. where there already are some uh, you know, other self-driving vehicles around that have mapped those sort of areas. True. I think California is the hot market for those. Yeah. So again, you get the junction view, says which lane we're going into, state, current state of the lights. So the, the traffic light camera is looking at all the traffic lights you can see and prioritising the ones that are closer to it so he knows he's making the right decision. If it can't see anything at all hmm. and isn't sure, it just doesn't move, it assumes red. Hmm. Safest thing to do. Last yeah. thing you want to do is move when it's not uh, on green. So when it comes across an empty road, does it accelerate on its own or just keep maintaining 40? So it, it will try and reach whatever the map speed is. Yeah. Um, so on the uh, on the approach road, it was 40 kph. Yeah. On the main road we've just been on, it was 80 Since, kph. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's what it will try to do unless there are vehicles in front of it, in which case it will drive slower. Okay. Does it read the road speed as well over here? 
Um, so currently, we, all this is built into our map. Okay. Um, ultimately, we will read uh, road signs as well, do traffic sign recognition, and use that to yeah, augment yeah. that. Because there might be a temporary speed limit based on road, road works, works or true, something like true. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the best 10 minutes in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Gently get to the